All right, guys. I uh, hope you can hear me okay. The wind's whipping pretty good today. Uh, but anyhow, I'm working on the 175C again. And what I'm doing uh, right now is um, I'm going to drain the uh, hydraulic tank and change. Uh, there's a replaceable filter in there. There's also a strainer you're supposed to clean and, and uh, reuse. So I'm going to drain the tank in order to do that. Uh, there's a I think there's like four or five O-rings in there that I'll be replacing too along with those filters. Um, so if you've seen my other videos, you know I'm doing a lot of maintenance to this thing. And uh, this is just the next thing on the list. So um, to do the, uh, to drain this tank here, there's a plug right here and there's a hole cut in that metal to allow. I'm hoping I can set a five gallon bucket right there and uh, drain it directly into that and won't make too big of a mess. So. Uh, I think this system, the book I think says this system holds like 24 gallons of hydraulic fluid. So I don't know how much is in the lines and cylinders and stuff, but I'm going to guess that there's still a pretty fair amount there in the tank. And the uh, tank is over full. When I picked it up, um, when I picked this machine up, and I've only had it for, well, maybe a month or two now, um, the old boy overfilled the system. This is the sight glass here. He thought it was empty, so he topped it off, and he filled it all the way plumb full. So there's, there's still extra fluid in there, so I'm kind of curious as how much is in here. Uh, but anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and drain that, and then uh, the access to the filters is in the top there. So I'll show you that here in a little bit. So uh, I'm going to get me a bucket, and uh, should take a half-inch ratchet with an extension to pop that plug out. I'm going to do that, and I'll catch you up here in a little bit. Okay, what you didn't see is... I had to put a uh, cheater bar on the end of my ratchet to get that plug to break. That was in there way too tight. This should make a pretty fair mess here. Especially with a wind on. tearing into the top up here and uh, try to show you as much of that as I can. Alright guys, so what I've done so far uh, is remove the uh, 10 bolts up here that hold this plate on top and I can tell that somebody's had trouble uh, getting this to seal. There's kind of some kind of goop or something up under this plate so maybe there's no gasket and they've used RTV sealant or it's hard to say. So. Uh, I'm going to pull this plate off and uh, probably need a, uh, I'm going to need some kind of pry tool to get that up. Probably need a bigger screwdriver than what I got here. Yeah, maybe not. It's a big one. There we go. <coughs> we'll see what it looks like under here. Okay, I don't know how well you can see it, but so down in that hole, that's the uh, filter uh, apparatus or uh, filter combination. There's like a shroud over the filter itself, so I'm going to take that big nut off there and put this whole contraption out. Then the little one down there... That's the suction side, so I'm going to have to uh, take that nut off there, lift that suction screen out. It's got a O-ring or two on it as well. So I'll take uh, both of these things out and uh, update you here in a bit. Okay, so here's the hydraulic uh, filter assembly. Uh, disassembled most of it. I'm not going to take, there is a, there's a spring, a snap ring, and uh, this cap then all comes off of this off of this bell shaped shaft. I'm not going to take that all apart. Um, I drained all the fluid out of it. There's no reason to take it apart other than just to clean it and put it all back together the way it was. So um, I'm just not going to do it. Uh, it doesn't look like it would trap any kind of a substantial amount of 
dirt or anything in there. Uh, what I did do was, there are three O-rings in this assembly. They're all the same O-ring. I replaced those. They all three look good. I'm just going to replace them anyhow while I'm in here. So there's one here, one here, and there's one here. Again, they're all three the same. Uh, the new filter I'm going to put in, uh, the old one, I mean, it, it don't look terrible. You know, it's not like it's got a bunch of nastiness hanging off of it or anything, but um, it's hard to say if it's, you know, real close or not. This is the new one I'm going to put on. Wix number is 51579. Uh, it looks like the old uh, Komatsu or International Harvester number is 666219C1. Anyhow, they both look the same. So uh, I'm going to drop this on. And this is going to seal. Let's get a little bit of oil. Probably shouldn't do that. But, uh, that o ring seals along the bottom of this filter here. So that goes on like that. And this goes on. Just a bit. Probably not the best oil to be using, but beats nothing. A little bit of slick ain't gonna hurt. Okay. Okay, that's that. Okay, looks good. Then this washer goes on. <coughs> Got another wipe. Looks real clean. Okay, then this. Nut goes on, and that looks like it's a Teflon lock nut. Uh, actually, the threads are kind of boogered up here, and this nut looks like it's a little boogered up too, but we're going to go with it. This takes an inch and five eighths socket. <coughs> so, rather than trying to clamp that in and a whole bit, I'm just going to use impact on it. That's what broke it loose. I'm going to use that to tighten it back up again. Good enough. Okay, that's that filter assembly. So that's done. I'm going to go pull the strainer assembly out of the tank while I get this out. This is out of the way. So uh, this looks real good. Everything pulled down nice and tight up there. Good and tight here. Uh, I'm going to go pull the strainer assembly out of the tank, bring it in here, and disassemble it. All right, guys, so I went and pulled the uh, suction strainer out, and uh, I had a little confusion. Um, the uh, book doesn't show an O-ring in there, but the parts diagram that I was looking at online shows an O-ring and actually a magnet contraption around it. Um, but, in fact, this machine doesn't have that magnet, doesn't have an O-ring, so it was a later model that uses that. Um, so there is no assembly, really, to take apart with the strainer, so I just cleaned it up real good. I got that set in here. Um, this is the tank top and this is the fill spout here. Uh, I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to clean it up real well. There's a, uh, a strainer for uh, uh, catching any big stuff that might fall in when you're filling the system. Uh, so I'll clean up that strainer and uh, I need to scrape this old, I think there is an old gasket on here. Um, so I need to get that up and uh, uh, clean this surface up real well. I think I'm probably going to cut a new gasket, uh, depending on how bad this is. But you can see it's got this uh, crappy RTV sealant stuff sticking all over around it. So I'm going to clean this up and uh, have a look at what it's going to take to make this seal right again. And I'll catch you guys up here in a little bit. Alright guys, so I got the old gasket scraped off of the uh, uh, plate there. Cleaned up pretty good. And I'm going to use the old gasket. I did my best to keep it in one piece and not deform it too much. I'm going to use it as a template to cut a new gasket. And I'm using this uh, 
Uh, part number 3187, it's a rubber fiber gasket material that I picked up from Napa. And I actually called this, Felpro is the company that makes this, I actually called Felpro to see what they suggested for this application. And this is what they said. So, uh, 16th of an inch thick, so uh, it's good and thick. It should give me, uh, you know, if there's any kind of uh, variation in the level on that plate or the top of the tank, then hopefully that 16th of an inch uh, thickness will help take that out. So. I'm going to lay this out, I'm going to put this on top of it, and I'm going to trace it with a uh, ink pen, and then I'm going to uh, cut it out with a pair of scissors, and I'm going to use my hollow punch set to knock out all the new holes. So if you guys ain't cutting your own gaskets and you're working on stuff, you're spending way too much money buying gaskets. And for something like this, I don't even know if I could find that gasket. So, um, you know, buy yourself a hollow punch set, 15 or 20 bucks at a farm supply store and start cutting your own gaskets. You can pick this stuff up. I think I got this roll for, I don't know, six or eight bucks. If I had to buy that gasket, I'm going to take a shot in the dark say that's probably a $20 gasket. So I can buy a hollow punch set and a roll of uh, gasket material and uh, be cheaper uh, than buying that one gasket. And then I got the punches for next time I need to use it. So anyhow, I'm going to do that right now. I'll catch you up here in a bit. All right, guys, as you can see, the... Uh, garage lights are on so uh, I lost the light pretty quick last thing you saw me do was preparing to cut that gasket it's starting to get dark out here um, this camera does a decent job of picking up the light it's it's starting to get really dark so I was in a hurry I didn't get much filming out here uh, essentially I cut the gasket I stuck the new filters in I mean there wasn't nothing special to that you dropped it you saw me put the uh, that new filter assembly back together um, you also saw the uh, suction strainer in there. I just cleaned that up with some diesel fuel, blew it off with the air hose, stuck that back down in the tank, and there's a spring and a nut that hold that on, and then the filter assembly uh, drops, the whole assembly drops in on a, uh, a big threaded rod. So you drop the assembly on there, then there's a, there's a big canister shroud. It's, it's just like an empty canister, and it sets over top of that, and then it's all held on by one big nut. So I put those in, I put my new gasket on, you can see it kind of peeking out here just a little bit. Uh, got my new gasket on, put all the bolts back in, um, and something to, uh, I guess kind of notice with these bolts, um, the washers under the bolts are actually copper, uh, because the, uh, you know, if this, this could leak up and around up through the threads and uh, leak out around the bolts, so they use a copper washer on here. Uh, to act as a seal around those bolts, so kind of interesting there. Um, the reason it got late on me, um, I did have kind of plenty of time, but uh, uh, my uncle and a buddy of his stopped by, and we spent a good bit talking and, and uh, checking tractors out and stuff like that. It's been a while since I've seen them, too. Um, they brought over this... Uh, appears to be a David Bradley riding mower. They knew I was kind of into this sort of stuff, and uh, uh, apparently uh, one of the neighbors was uh, had this sitting out, and it must have run a year or so ago, and they did some tinkering with it, and for whatever reason it quit. So uh, they brought it over. The neighbor was going to throw it out and uh, asked if they knew anybody that might be interested, and they thought of me, so that was great. Um, so anyhow, they just dropped it off and... Uh, uh, that's going to be another project. It looks pretty good shape, though. Uh, it's cool looking, but I don't know anything about these David Bradleys. The shifter setup on this is really uh, different than anything I've seen. I can't figure out how to get it out of gear, and there's no gear shifter. Um, this lever here works uh, pulleys up there, and this lever here works pulleys back here. Uh, you know, it's got... V-belt's driving back and forth here, so uh, this is going to be a big big time uh, learning deal for me. But uh, we'll see what it takes to get this thing going. That's going to be a whole other set of videos, I'm sure. So uh, look for that. Uh, otherwise, if you uh, like this video, click that like button. And uh, if you want to see more videos with this and that, Click the subscribe button, and I uh, hope this video helped you, if nothing else. I know my videos aren't terribly entertaining, but maybe if you're working on something like this, maybe it helped. Uh, let me know if it did or didn't in the comments down below, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.